Welcome back, I'm Miss Seddon and this week we're making savoury scones. These are a fabby alternative to your typical sandwich in your lunchbox. Um, they're great on picnics or as a savoury, more healthy alternative snack between meals to avoid eating those crisps and sweets. So let's get ready for practical or mise en place. Wash our hands, sanitise our surfaces, ready half a bowl of hot soapy water, put an apron on, get our hair up, get our equipment and we'll go through the ingredients now. We also need to light our oven to 200 centigrade or gas mark 6 and please make sure that you are asking for adult supervision if you have difficulty lighting your oven. For this recipe you will need 200 grams of self-raising flour, a half teaspoon of baking powder, 75 grams of margarine um, or butter, one egg uh, and then um, to flavour it, to season it, you can have a variety of options. So you could have dry herbs, so dry chives or maybe mixed herbs or you could use fresh herbs either from the shops or these are fresh chives that I just cut from my garden. You could also choose from 75 grams of cheese one spring onion, uh, two thick or eight thin slices of ham, four small mushrooms or six green or black olives. The first thing that we're going to do is sieve our flour and we're going to measure our baking powder. We need a quarter of a teaspoon, I only have a half teaspoon measure to spur, remember not to spur, to spur te teaspoon. So I'm just going to take half of my measure. Then we're going to shake it side to side, not up and down, okay, because it will have a huge cloud of uh, flour. So side to side, like so, or you can tap the side of your sieve, whichever works easy. Now there's two reasons why we need to sieve. First of all is to break up any of the lumps. You can just break them up with your fingers or with a spoon. There we go. And the other reason is to introduce air. In some recipes we don't need to bother sieving, for instance making biscuits, but we want these scones to rise uh, very much like a cake or like bread. We want them to rise, be nice and tall and fluffy, so by introducing air into it, then we will encourage that even more so. And of course we are using self-raising flour. Next we're going to take a butter knife, just a regular knife like you have at home. We're going to pop our margarine or our butter in. And we're going to cut it up sides of our bowl. Don't just try and do it randomly in the middle, you won't really get enough purchase. Up against the sides and we'll cut it, cut that one large lump into lots of smaller pieces. So the method for today is the rubbing in method, the rubbing in method. We are going to get our hands in momentarily but we want to start with smaller pieces. Just find any ones that look particularly large. There we go. So now with clean hands we can get in for the rubbing in method. You want to go down the sides and lift it high out of the bowl. Okay? Trying to do it in the bowl you won't have as much area to work in so lift it high and you want to dig in sideways and lift it up like so. I like to think of it as almost like playing the xylophone. I play it from my little little finger to my index finger using my thumb, just using the finger tips. You're not trying to mash it, you're not trying to squeeze it, just using the finger tips to break up the larger pieces of margarine using the flour to break it all up. So lift and break. And you see I actually letting most of it fall through the gaps in my fingers. And you won't get all of it all at once. That's fine. Really scooping down the sides. I'm really trying to get to my fingers right to the bottom of the bowl to collect all that flour. There we go, I'm getting there. 
Now the consistency that we're looking for is like fine breadcrumbs. So it's going to have a very soft, almost kind of like a beautiful golden beachy sandy kind of texture. Nearly there. And there we go. So you can see, we've got fine breadcrumbs like so. Now, the last thing you can do is you can put it down and give it a shake. And that will bring any of the larger lumps that you still have to break up with your fingers to the top so that you can just get those more easily. So finish that off and we'll come back to the next bit. The next step is to prepare all of our fillings. So I'm starting with my ham. Now I could try and cut it into small slices, but I'm gonna be here all day. So what I like to do is, and remembering to use the knife technique in the right way, so fingers on the side, thumb goes on like a magnet. Don't have our finger over the top, it's an extension of our arm. So what I like to do is I like to cut it just in half, pop it on top, you can roll it up, and then using the claw technique, you can cut it into easy, fine little ribbons. Ready to add into the bowl. For olives, we've gone through this before, but we just need to remember to use the bridge technique all the way through. There we go. and then into little pieces using our claw and just keeping our fingers clear. This is why we need to keep our fingernails on top of the food well away. There we go. And we can add those in as well. Hopefully by now we're familiar with how to prepare our mushrooms, but just to recap, uh, we want to make sure that we are cleaning all of the soil off the surface so we can either wash it or we can peel it by putting our thumb underneath and peeling off the top layer like so. So personal preference, you decide. Then we want to make sure that we are removing the leathery end off the stalk, popping that in our bits bowl, but we don't want to remove all the stalk because it's perfectly good food. And we want nice small pieces, so I'm gonna cut it in half and then some fine slices. There we go. If they're particularly large, you could cut them in half. and they're ready to add in. With spring onions, we want to make sure that we're removing the outside layer. Um, it might be one of the larger ones as well. We want to always remove the outside layer because it's, it's quite rubbery, um, tends to be quite old, um, gets a bit dirty as well. So we want to just trim the ends off, whatever length is not very appetizing, um, and any other parts that are not really gonna work. And then, very simply, I'm going to use our claw technique and I'm going to go from the end. I'm going to cut little rounds, moving my fingers up as I go, all the way down to the bottom. ready to add in. If you have fresh herbs, we don't want to just sit there and try and do one by itself all day long, it's going to take too long. So kind of like with the ham, I'm going to fold it in half, roll it up, make it easier on myself. There we go. So it's like a little fine bundle using the claw, making sure my fingers are tucked right underneath in line with my knuckles. And now I can go along just like with my spring onions and I can chop them into nice fine pieces. Slow it down as you get closer to your fingers, like so. Perfect. If you're adding dry herbs, we want two teaspoons. So here we go, shake it off so it's level, and then we know that's the right amount. 
to prepare our cheese we need to make sure we're holding the top of our box grater not the sides we want the large great side not the zest or the small grate or the slice okay so hold it away from you or sideways personal preference nice long strokes up and down And as you get towards the end with a smaller piece, you turn it around, keeping your fingers clear. And as the piece gets very small, put your fingers flat up against it, keeping your thumb out of the way, slow it down, and you'll be able to feel as the grater gets closer to your fingers so you won't grate them. There we go, perfect. Next we want to create our egg and water mix. So in a small bowl or in a mug or a measuring jug, we want to take our egg and I'm right-handed, so I'm putting it in my left hand and I'm holding onto it, I'm nestling it. And I'm gonna take the back of my knife and I'm just gonna give it one good hit. If you hit it multiple times, you'll break the shell um, and you're more likely to have shell in your food. So one good hit using your thumbs to get inside, open it up and pop it in. And then that can go in the food waste or your compost. And then we want a tablespoon of water. Now what we don't want to do is fill our tablespoon, walk from the tap all the way across to our workplace and then pop it in. That's very silly. So we're gonna take this over to the tap and add our water in at the tap. Now with a fork, we want to mix it up. So you use a rotating action should be all in the wrist you shouldn't have to use your upper arm and try and go round and round until it's all mixed up there we go. so here are all my ingredients in the bowl so I'm going to get my hands in and mix them all around. Make sure everything's coated in that flour. Oh, I can smell it already. It smells lovely. It smells a bit like pizza. So I'm going to take my egg and pop it in. Make sure you're getting every last bit out of your container. And with a wooden spoon, remembering to use it as an extension of our arm, trying to avoid doing it like this because it puts a lot of pressure on our wrist. So holding it almost like a knife, mix it all around. Now this is a very dry mix. Scones are a dry food. They're not as moist as bread, but obviously they're just different. So this won't be a wet, sticky dough like you're used to. Depending on what ingredients you've got as well, the cheese might help, but it's going to look fairly dry. So I'm mixing it all around, and that's probably about as far as I'm going to get with this. Now it doesn't, at the moment, it's not sort of coming together in a dough ball, but we're going to get to it. So I'm going to get this all off my spoon. And now I want to get my hands in. And I'm pressing down from above using the heel of my palm, pressing it all together. Really making it squeeze. There we go. So your bowl should be clean. You should have one consistent only slightly squidgy dough ball with all of your ingredients in there. Now if it doesn't look like this and it's not holding together you could add half a tablespoon of water at a time until it does look like that and I've never known anyone to need more than two tablespoons so half a tablespoon at a time um, in order to get it nice and squidgy. Next we are going to flour the surface so don't want to get it absolutely everywhere, just enough to prevent it from sticking. Okay, a little bit on the top as well. So we want to press it down and I like to turn it around a little bit as well, keep it, it shaped together. We want it until it is 
three centimeters high, which is about two fingers high. So if I put my two fingers down on the side, I could go down just a little bit more, but not by much. There we go, that's about perfect. We'll see how many scones we can get out of here. Now here's my selection of cutters. We, the smallest one, not ideal, they'll cook a bit too quickly. You could use um, a middle sized one, like that, or like that one. And I wouldn't recommend one of the very large ones. So one of those two sizes. With one of these ones, you'll get four, maybe five. Uh, with one of these ones, you'll get five, six, something like that. So I'm gonna make slightly larger ones. And you can see that on my set, I have a straight cut and a fluted cut. Now, you choose whichever one you like. If you wanna have the fluted cut because it's just for fun, go ahead. Traditionally, the straight cut is, indicates savoury scones and the fluted cut indicates sweet scones. Just a little, little tip there, little fact. So I'm gonna use my straight edge. I'm gonna come down and we don't wanna do it right out of the middle because then we're gonna to struggle to get them all in. So right up against the edge, press all the way down. There we go, there's one. three and four and then I can get my remnants together really squeeze it all up and if you've got enough that you could do some more cuts out of it go ahead but in this case I think I'm probably just going to leave that one as one large one to go with these guys I'm going to flour my tray making sure I've got every part, because anywhere there isn't flour, these scones will stick. And then pop them on. Make sure you give them a little bit of space between each other, just in case they spread out and touch each other. There we go, like so. And now these are gonna go into the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. Um, and that will depend on the size, depend on the cutter that you use. Um, mine are a little larger, so I'm gonna give them about 15 minutes. We want them to be golden on the sides and on the underside, um, but not too dark. So, I'll see you back then. In the meantime, we can be getting on with our washing up. So I've placed them on a trivet and now we can transfer them over to a cooling rack. We want to make sure that they have an opportunity to cool down. So I'm using a fish slice, you could use fish slice or you could use a palette knife. You can see my big guy here got a little bit, a little bit large but never mind. Um, and we're going to let those cool and then we can be ready to enjoy them. In the meantime we can wash up our tray. So these were really successful. You can see they're just golden on the edges, they're golden on the bottom, um, they're light, fluffy, they're cheesy, delicious, um, well seasoned, I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. Um, they make a great snack as I said, or I'm gonna enjoy them for my lunch tomorrow alongside some salad and some kind of meat probably. Um, I hope you enjoyed making those with me and we'll see you next time.